Hi everyone, it's Rob at ASFC Chemistry and what I'm going to go through with you next are a couple of the more tricky buffer calculations you will encounter in the upper six part of the course. So just to make this clear, this is just for year two students and we're following the OCRA specification for the A-level. I hope you find this helpful. Okay everyone, so this is a buffer calculation where we're making the buffer from dissolving some solid salt inside the weak acid. So I've got all the information there. I've got 180 centimeters cubed of the weak acid. Concentration of the weak acid is 0.7 mol per decimeter cubed. And the mass of the salt is three grams. And the formula for the salt is sodium methanoate CH3COONA. The Ka value is always given in the question as well for ones like this, where they want you to calculate the pH of the buffer solution as otherwise you wouldn't be able to determine it. Now the first thing I've done on the left hand side over here is I've written the Ka expression. I've written it in its traditional format before I've rearranged it down here to give me H plus equals. Why have I done this? Because I know only one expression for calculating the pH and it involves minus log of the H plus ion concentration. And so what I need to do is have an expression which is going to give me this quantity. And I can have that just here by rearranging the Ka. Now one of the things people make mistakes with though is these terms get flipped upside down into this expression and sometimes people label them up the wrong way. Now this value of CH3COOH, which is for the weak acid concentration, is here, the 0.7. I've lifted it straight from the question. I'm okay to keep it as a 0.7, I don't have to change that at all, because I'm not mixing together two volumes in order to make this solution, this buffer solution, and therefore the number of moles per decimeter cubed will not change of that weak acid. Furthermore, the weak acid only dissociates slightly. And so that means the concentration of the weak acid is roughly constant. So I can keep that 0.7 there and I don't have to change it whatsoever. What about my CH3COO minus? You can see I've not calculated this straight away down here. Well, since I was given a mass, whenever I see a mass in an exam question, instinctively I think, right, it's going to be moles equals mass over MR. And in this case, I was right. Over here on the right hand side, what you can see is I've got 3 grams divided by 82. The 82 is the molar mass of CH3COONA. This gives me a number of moles of 0.0365. This mole value then can then be used here to calculate a concentration once I divide it by the volume it's being dissolved in, 180 centimeters cubed of the weak acid, and it gives me a concentration of 0.203. This concentration can be popped straight into the calculation over here. Run all these numbers through and you get a H plus ion concentration of 6.03 times 10 to the minus 5, which can then be placed directly into the pH expression and it gives me a pH of 4.22. So that's how we calculate the pH of a buffer solution, but what then might the examiner do? The next thing the examiner might do is give you a calculation like this, where something has been added to the buffer solution and it's going to cause for a set of changes. So the question actually ends here and it reads, calculate the resulting pH of this buffer solution if 5 centimeters cubed of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed KOH is added. First thing you've got to think of is what's going to happen? Well, the amount of weak acid is going to go down and the salt ion concentration is going to go up because this is an alkali and so it's going to react with the acid to produce more salt. So first thing is how many moles of the KOH, because things react in molar quantities, how many moles of the KOH am I adding? I'm adding 5 times 10 to the minus 4. All right then, so I expect the weak acid concentration to go down and the salt ion concentration to go up, but I have to determine what the moles change by first. So, I've got my CH3COOH moles, which is 0.126 mol. Now I've calculated that by doing moles equals concentration times volume using the information from the previous part of the question, which was on the page before this one. I've also got a number of moles of the salt ion, which again, I got from the, the previous page's question, and it's 0.0365. What I've then done here is, you can see I've taken away a mole value equivalent to the number of moles of KOH added from the weak acid, and I've added a number of moles equivalent 
to the number of moles of KOH to the salt ion. And this is because the weak acid is going to go down by the amount of KOH that was added because it reacts with it. And the salt ion is going to go up because more salt gets made. And specifically, the amount more of salt that is going to be made is the number of moles of KOH. So I take these mole values and adjust them accordingly to give me these two new mole values over here. Now you can chuck these straight into the Ka expression rearranged down here if you want, but I have this air of consistency with these questions where if I ever see something in square brackets to stop me making a mistake, I will still turn it into a concentration. So you'll have to forgive me a little bit here for having these two concentrations here being calculated where the volume terms would actually cancel. But I've got here at the top, this is my number of moles of the weak acid, and this is my number of moles of the salt ion, and they've been adjusted as described above. They're being turned into concentrations by dividing by the new volume, though. So you can see here I've got 185, and that's because I had 180 centimeters cubed of my buffer solution, and I added 5 centimeters cubed of the KOH. This all gives me a H plus ion concentration of 5.94 times 10 to the minus 5. This then can be placed straight into the log expression, minus log of the H plus ion concentration gives me a pH of 4.23. And if we just compare the two pHs of the calculations we've done, you can see that after we've added the alkali, we've got that the pH has become less acidic, which is what we would expect, because some of the acid has now reacted. So we've gone from 4.22 to a less acidic pH value of 4.23. We can say the pH has increased. Be careful with that though, because some people think when you say the pH increases, you're making it more acidic, but we're not. Of course, think of the scale, it's back to front really in that respect. If we make something more acidic, we should lower the pH. I hope this clears up any questions you have about buffer solution calculations and some of the more complicated examples. If you would like me to cover a specific topic in one of these tutorials, please send us a tweet at ASFC underscore chemistry or leave a comment below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of our videos. Happy revising.